I want to speak for just a moment, just a moment, and um, I'm not going to talk long. I know we, we're all here together. we got kids and things to do, and it's Christmas Eve. But I do want to share just, I really have something in my heart I wanted to share uh, real quick. We're gonna, I'm going to read this scripture. We're going to pray. And uh, just like every Sunday, uh, man, if you uh, uh, get tithe and offering is available at the back, we appreciate your uh, support there. Uh, check, cash check at the thing and online, all the options are available. If you're online, welcome. Hope you're having a good time. I uh, can't imagine that it's a better time than what we're having right here, but, uh, we, but you're still family. We're with you, man. I hope you're doing it however you do it there as well. So welcome. Be a part of the family. I want to read the scripture, John chapter 14, 27. It's not, it's not like one of the normal Christmas parts of the story of the Bible, but, but it does represent what, what Jesus, part of what Jesus came to do. John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Don't be troubled or afraid. We'll talk for a minute about the gift he gave. Turn to somebody and say the gift he gave. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this time and this moment. I ask Holy Spirit for your word to just be, uh, just be a fire in our souls today. Let it, let it be bigger than anything that we might be going through or facing. Let it speak louder than any voice that we might be hearing that's not your voice. And I pray, Jesus, that you will show us yourself through your word this morning in these few moments we have today. In Jesus' name, everybody said. One more time, everybody put your hand on your belly one time. We're going to do one more prayer. One time, put your hand on your belly at home. Join us. We're going to ask the Lord to speak to us today. Say, Jesus, speak to me today. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears. Let me hear what you want me to hear. Let me see what you want me to see so I can do what you want me to do and be what you've called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, if I'm being super honest, uh, maybe too honest, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I might be too honest sometimes up here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys, sometimes, uh, let's, just, let's just be honest about it. Sometimes Christmas is maybe not always the most, it, it, it may not always be as peaceful as uh, we sing about like it should. Is that, is that fair to say? Uh, in, fact, uh, in fact, this week, this week I did the opposite of what Jesus instructed us to do. We're going to talk about here. This week, uh, earlier this week, <clears throat> before I was really uh, prayed up and, and anointed, uh, uh, you know, I did the, Jesus says here, don't let yourself be troubled. I mean, I, I let myself, I let myself get a little troubled uh, this week. And I was, and, and when I got, when I let myself get troubled, I troubled my wife uh, and, and troubled her. And then I got in trouble. And so it's always a mess when, when that happens, you know. And at the end of the day, I come back, I have to apologize, and I'm like, babe, I'm sorry, I, I was out of line, and I let my peace, I, I did not hold on to that peace there that we're supposed to be getting from Jesus because I had a freak out moment and, and let myself be troubled. And here's the thing, Jesus, and it's crazy to me too, because I know this isn't like part of the Christmas story. In fact, this is, this is just a few moments before Jesus is going to get arrested. This is at the Last Supper. This is towards the end of Jesus' story. He's talking to the disciples, but he uses this language here where he says, he says, I'm giving you a gift. And it's also wild to me that, that my entire and your entire exchange with Jesus is nothing but him giving to me and me receiving from him and there's literally nothing I can give back to him except except my worship except my surrender but that's but it, but it's always something he's giving amen somebody even even in his last even in his last few moments here he is saying I'm I'm still giving and I have a gift to give to you and this gift that Jesus says he gives us is he is giving us peace everyone say peace Jesus says, the gift I'm giving you is this gift, and some translations say this gift of my peace. And that word peace, one of the translations of that word peace there in the Greek in the New Testament, it means, it, it, it means an exemption, an exemption from the rage or the havoc of war. Jesus said, I'm gonna, I want to give you this gift. As, I, as we wrap this thing up, and I do what I was sent here to do 
30 years ago in that manger, what we're singing about here today, and what we're celebrating in this time of Christmas, Jesus says, as I get ready to wrap that up and, and, and put a bow on that and do what I came to do, die on the cross, shed my blood, right, raise from the dead and do it for you. He said, I'm going to give you this gift. I want to give you this peace. I want to give you this exemption. I want to give you the ability. I want to give you the ability to not be troubled and to not feel the stress and the weight of the war that sometimes rages in our lives. Amen. And I, I listen, I'm not going to get into a super, you know, news topical thing here, but I mean, I mean, you, you can't, you can't turn on any media and not see some report of war. I mean, w like literally real war is happening right now while we're here in, in our world and thank God it's not happening right now in our midst, but that that's going on. Amen. Somebody. And, and listen, what Jesus is saying is, listen, I want you to be exempt from stressing out about the wars and the fights and the turmoil that you hear going on. Amen, somebody? I got news for you guys. If we're turning on CNN or Fox News or, or Facebook, whatever you're getting your source from, if you're turning it on and you turn it on and you get stressed out and start sweating and your day is ruined, we're not, we're, we're not doing, we're not, we don't, we're, we're missing this gift Jesus gives us. Amen, somebody? Some of us, sometimes there's, hey, the, sometimes there's a war going on on the inside of me. Amen? There's a war happening inside. I'm struggling. There's a war going between, am I going to live by faith? Am I going to live by fear? Am I going to do what God's called me to do, or am I going to do my own thing? Am I going to be troubled, or am I going to make trouble and get in trouble? There's this stuff happening inside, and that's a war also. And, and Jesus says, I want, you to exp I want you to be exempt from the havoc that life's war causes. Now, this is really important here, too. Notice he doesn't say you're exempt from the war. He doesn't say I'm just going to shield you in this little bubble and keep you from fighting and keep you from the stuff that's going on. But what he does say is I want to give you a gift that's going to that's gonna shield you if you'll let it, not from the fight and not from the war and not from the battle. We're not just sticking our head. But he says I want you to be exempt from the results and the stress and the havoc and the raging of that war. That is his peace. Amen? And that, family, is the gift that he gave. That is the gift that he's leaving us with. And so the question then is this. How in the world does Jesus how can I experience, how do we have peace in the middle of all the things? I've got real stuff I'm dealing with in my life, preacher. I, I get, I, there's real things, people are really dying on the other side. How do we just ignore that? How do we just turn a blind eye to that? How do we not let that affect us? How do I not let myself get stressed out when I'm, when I, when I'm wondering how in the world, I don't know if I'm going to make it even to the end of the year. I mean, Christmas came early and there's way too much there's way too much Christmas at the end of the money, preacher. I don't know how in the world I'm not supposed to be affected. How am I not supposed to be troubled by that? Here's how. Here's how. The reason we can experience this peace is this. Because the peace that I have in Jesus is this. It's knowing that in every single battle, he's already won. <laughs> See, when I go into a fight, when I approach a war that I might be dealing with within or without or wherever it's coming from, when I am approaching that and I'm not really sure of how it's going to work out and I'm not really sure of whether or not I'm going to get through it or not, oh, then I'm, 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 I'm not going to have any peace at all. I'm going to have a troubled mind and a troubled spirit in this troubled world. But when I know by looking at Jesus, when I turn to the cross, when I see his death, burial, and resurrection, and I know that he has ultimately won every good and perfect gift, and, it, and he, is, he has purchased victory for me, and every, I can have peace knowing no matter what war I'm looking at, dealing with, going through, at the end of the day, Jesus has already assured my victory in him. Amen, somebody? So if I'm struggling to find that exemption, if I'm struggling to find that peace in this season, I would encourage somebody this morning to get your soul, your mind, and your heart steadied on the work of Jesus Christ and know that what he did for you 2,000 years ago on Calvary, what he did for you, what we celebrate, that's the reason that we celebrate this moment because it affected history and won so much for us. I would, I would challenge and encourage you, man, if we're struggling to find peace in this moment and in this season, 
remember, Jesus has already won every battle. Amen, somebody. The peace I have in Jesus is knowing that in every battle, he has won. And then he says this. He says, I'm giving you this gift, guys. I'm giving you this gift, and I'm the only one that can give it. He says, the world cannot give you this peace, this exemption that I'm talking about. That word world means, has to do not only with the cosmos and creation, we talked about that a little bit last week, we looked at John 3, 16, but it also has to do with the system or the order of government that exists in the world. If the world would mean the world system, how the world operates. What Jesus is saying is, if you do things the way that everyone else does, if you live your life the way that it just seems normal and that makes sense, and that the way that everyone says to do it, he says, you're not going to, he said, you can't find, you can't find this gift I'm giving you that way. Amen, somebody? You can't find it through a government. You can't find it through a vote. You can't find it through a drug. You can't find it through a relationship. You can't find it through an amount of success or money. You can't find it through a promotion. You can't find it through any other means except Jesus. Amen? The world can't give it. I can't fight my way to it. I can't earn my way to it. I can't win my way to it. I can't hustle my way to it. I can't even be good enough to earn it. I can't, I can't succeed. Listen, here's the thing. This piece Jesus talks about. I was watching this movie. I think it may have been last Sunday. I found a movie. You ever seen the movie The Legend of Bagger Vance? Old, all, the old, all the older people say, shaking their head. You know, I've never heard of it. <laughs> So it's a movie about golf. Hey, let me let me tease you with how great it's a movie about golf, everybody. Okay. Anyway, it's a movie about golf, but but and I'm not a big golfer. Uh, but but it, the the one of the characters in the movie keeps talking about golf. You know, as this poetic, philosophical, whatever. It's it's. Thank you. This means I'm sweating. Anyway, the caddy, who's one of the main characters, makes this statement about golf. He says, "Golf." is not a game that can be won. It's only a game that can be played. Right? There's no, there's no winning and losing in golf. It's just you playing the game and getting the score that you get. Right? And, man, that is a, that is a beautiful way to talk about life. And, and here's the thing. That's also what we talk When we talk about the gift of peace that Jesus is talking about, guys, listen, it's not a gift that I can earn. It's not a gift I can buy. It's not a gift I can, I can work my way up a ladder to. It is only a gift that I can receive. Does that make sense? This piece Jesus says, this exemption Jesus is talking about, is something that can only be received. The peace of Christ can never be earned. It is a gift that can only be received. And... and <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but the older I get, I feel like the, sometimes the more difficult it is for me to just, to, for me to re- just receive, some, you know what I mean? Like, we get around this time of year, people start asking you, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, man, I don't want anything for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I've already bought it on a, my Amazon card. You know, like, I don't, there's, I've, I, there's nothing, <sighs> what am I going to tell, you know? And, and some of that's, it, it can be, you get so used to being, you know, you're doing it, but if we bring that mindset to Jesus, we're going to miss out on this great gift that he's promised us here. Amen? Because I can't earn it. I can only just open my arms, open my heart, open my spirit, and just say, Jesus, I receive it. Amen? And then he says this, and then I'm, I'm almost done here. I'm not, I told you I'm not going to talk long. This last statement is the one that, 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 that trips me up sometimes. Because then he says this. He says, I'm going to give you this piece. You you can only get it from me. The world cannot give it to you. And then he just says this. So don't be troubled. So So just don't be troubled. Easy, right? And that's that's his attitude. He's like, hey, I'm giving you this gift. So just, just don't be troubled. Just don't let your heart. So some translations say, don't let your heart be troubled. And that's one of these statements. I'm like, Jesus, you said that so, so like nonchalantly, so chill. 
like we're just like how do you how do you how am I supposed when I see the things happening in the world when I'm dealing with the struggles that I'm dealing with in my life how in the world am I supposed to just don't be troubled how am I supposed to just not let my heart be troubled when I'm not able maybe to do the things that I want to do. How am I just supposed to not let myself be troubled when, when it feels like the, the world is all stacked against me and the cards are not working out of my favor in any area of my life? How am I supposed to not let myself be troubled when I see other people struggling and other people going through things? And how am I supposed to not let my heart be troubled? And I wish I had an easy answer for you today. I will tell you this. I think a big part of it is what Jesus, I'm not going to read it, but in the verse right before this, in verse 26, Jesus also says, hey, before he says, I'm giving you this gift of peace, he says, I'm also leaving with you this guy called the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm giving you, I'm going to send to you the Holy Spirit. And then he says, now don't let your heart be troubled. Accept this peace. I believe that walking in the peace of Jesus and that gift goes hand in hand with knowing and, and deeply walking with the, the power of the Holy Spirit operating in my life. Amen. In fact, I'll go as far to say this. The Holy Spirit is the answer to every how that I ever have when it comes to Scripture. In fact, when Jesus was prophesied and the angel showed up to Mary and he was like, and the angel was like, you're, you're going the, the to you're gonna give birth to the Messiah. You're going to call him Jesus and said that back in, uh, in the Gospel of Luke. Mary asked the same question. Mary said, well, well how, how is this going to be? And you know what the angel said? The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and that's how this thing that don't look like it can be is going to be. I need to tell somebody real quick, the thing you don't know how it's going to happen, the Holy Spirit knows how it's going to happen, and he's how it's going to happen. Amen? And that peace, you've been, that peace that you've been striving for, that peace that you've been trying to work for, that peace that you've been trying to, to, to put your hands on, I'm telling you, it's in the Holy Spirit. And if we'll surrender to the Holy Spirit and invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our lives, you that's where that gift of peace begins to operate in my life. <clears throat> and because of the Holy Spirit and this gift of peace, even when life is full of trouble, the peace of Christ allows me to have an untroubled heart. Amen. I know it seems crazy to think about, and, 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 and I can't explain to you how to do it. I can only say that if Jesus said to do it, come on, come on up here, Eric, or play, play something for me. What are you going to do? If Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, he has every intention of giving us the power and the strength to live that out. Amen. Gee, this text lets me know that no matter how much trouble I'm dealing with in my life, Jesus gives me the ability to have an untroubled heart in that moment. Amen? I know this isn't very, make, this isn't like mind-blowing stuff here today. You know, this isn't like some vision and word from heaven that I had. But here's what I really just felt. This is why I share this. I just really feel like in this moment, Somebody just really needs to experience the peace of Christ this morning. That's just what some, that's just what the Lord put on my heart for this moment today. I just, I just, I just, I just really sense in my spirit that man, someone, someone in this room, someone online, needs just needed this reminder today. In all of the hustle and all of the stuff and in all of the trying and in all of the stuff that's going on, just needed a reminder, hey, hey, Jesus has given you peace. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen? <clears throat> I'm going to pray. We're going to close this moment together. <clears throat> would you just, would you bow your heads right there where you don't have to stand, but would you bow your hands, your heads for a moment and just close your eyes for a second just to let the, the word of God and the spirit of the Lord kind of just marinate our spirits and talk to us for a minute. And I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you down front here today, but, but, but if, you, if, that's, if that's where you are today, if you would say, hey, man, I, I need the peace of Christ. I need to, 
I need to receive that gift today. I, I need to know his peace today. Would you would you just raise your hand real quick all over this room? Say, I need I need that peace in this season. I need that peace in this season. Amen. You can put it down. You don't have to leave it up to the altar today. I'm, I'm gonna pray that over us today, though. And this is what I'm praying. Philip, listen, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Paul writes these words. He says, I want you to experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. What Paul said is that God has a peace for you and I to experience that doesn't make any sense. And it's not going to make any sense. But it's a peace from heaven. What it is, it's just a supernatural peace. And that's really, really what I sense in my heart. I believe that a supernatural peace from heaven God wants to minister that to your soul, to your mind, to your heart right now. And that's what I'm going to ask for right now. If you just receive that, man, just receive this from the Lord today. Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus over every troubled heart, over every troubled mind, over every troubled soul, dealing with who knows what it doesn't matter what the what the catalyst is what the thing is that's causing the trouble Jesus I I thank you for the gift of your peace that you've given us and I pray right now over every troubled heart the peace of God that supersedes that passes all human understanding, logic, and reason. I pray that you will release that over your sons and daughters right now in this moment on this Christmas Eve. I pray and I pray, God, as you release that, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us, especially those of us in this moment that just raised our hands, those of us that are saying we need that, help us to receive that right now in Jesus' name. Help us to receive that right now in Jesus' name. Receive the peace of God in the name of Jesus. I speak that over you right now. I speak that over whoever needs to hear that. Receive the peace of God. Receive his gift of peace in Jesus' name. Just receive it. Just stop, stop, stop. You see, you start, you, I know what's happening in our mind. Your mind is going, well, what about this? Or what about that? That's fine. That's still there. It's not, a, we're not, it's not, it's not going anywhere. But, but res, walk through it with the peace of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that gift of peace. Thank you for supernatural peace from heaven. You are the only place that we can get it. It exists only in you. It exists only in you. If you're in this place this morning, you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've never experienced the peace of God because you've never experienced a relationship with Jesus before. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm not going to embarrass you again. I'm not going to call you down front. I will in just a moment ask you to raise your hand. If you've never invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you've never experienced his forgiveness and never asked him to forgive you of your sins. You can do that today. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have all the questions answered. You just have to believe. You just have to believe, hey, that's for me. And that's exactly what the word of God tells us. Jesus, the son of God, the reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus was born on this earth. Jesus, fully God and fully man, lived the life of sinless perfection that the law of God demands that we live. He never lied, never stole, never did anything wrong. He lived the fullness of every single Old Testament commandment that us, because of our sin, could never live. And not only did he fulfill and live the life that we are all commanded to live and obligated to live according to the law of our Creator, he then, having never broken the law, received the punishment for the law in our place. 
And about 30 years after he was born, he had nails driven into his hands and his feet, and he was hung naked on a cross, and he gave his life in our place. After living the life that we should live, he died the death that our sin demands that we die. And he did it for one reason and one reason only, because he loves you. And today, man, there would be no greater Christmas that you could experience than to coming into agreement, than to come into agreement with the the love that Jesus has already shown us through his cross. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And right now in heaven, and even right now in this moment, I believe through the Holy Spirit, he might be knocking on the door of your heart. He might be doing it at home somewhere. He might be doing it in this room. And I'm going to ask you to respond. With every head bowed, every eye closed for just one more moment. You say, man, I, I've, never, I've never invited Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Or maybe you prayed a prayer years ago, and it just didn't mean anything. It didn't have any effect. And that's, all, that's happened to all of us. But right now, the Lord might be saying, hey, this is a moment to make this real, to come home. Wherever you're in that spectrum, if you say, I need to say yes to Jesus today, we just one more time raise your hand all over this room, and we're going to pray together. Amen. 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 I want everyone in this room right now, at home and in this, in this, in this place live, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Do it out loud so you can hear it with your own ears. Say, Jesus, I come to you right now, just like I am a sinner who has sinned, but I believe you're the Son of God. You died on the cross, you rose from the dead, and you did it for me. And I ask you right now to forgive me of my sins. Come and live on the inside of me, Holy Spirit. Be the King and the Lord of my life, past, present, and future. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for those that have prayed that prayer. Thank you that are making that confession of faith. Now, Lord, I ask you to do what only you can do. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bear witness with our spirit that we are becoming and have become children of God. In Jesus' name, let us know deep down in our soul. I come against every lie of the enemy that would say this moment is not real, this is fake, this is just a what. I rebuke that lie from the pit of hell right now in Jesus' name. And I pray that you will let us in our spirit, let us in our soul hear the same sound that's happening in heaven right now that the Word of God says that angels are rejoicing when any one person comes home. And we thank you for welcoming us home right now in the name of Jesus. Stand all over this place if you can. Stand all over this place if you can. I'm going to pray this prayer over us. We stretch your hands this way. Receive this blessing from the Lord. If you need prayer for anything in your life, man, we're here. You don't have to rush off. Um, find me. Find one of our elders that are up here earlier. Man, find Pat. We, we, we want to pray with you. And I'm praying you have a great Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many, how many feel the presence of God here? I feel the Holy Spirit here right now. I do. Thank you, Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord establish you and the Lord give you his peace that passes all understanding, that doesn't make any sense, and that only comes from heaven. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you receive that, say amen. If you receive that, say amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, guys. Have a great holiday. We love you, ma'am. Hang out, finish eating food, and uh, if anybody wants to stay, help us roll these tables up and load them up. We're going to be doing that here in just a few moments, man. God bless you all. Merry Christmas.